Hello, this is Chris Nelson of EvolveConsciousness.org. It's been a while. I've been gone doing personal stuff in my life, getting a life built. And I'll be coming back now to do more information dissemination and knowledge and truth sharing. It's been a while, so the vividness of all the knowledge I had before has diminished. And I was going through some of the information again on what on earth is happening and did a point form type of flow chart, I guess, of some of the concepts and ideas presented in the Aquinas on Liberty essay, as Mark Passio has uh, coined it, which he first presented, I think, in episode nine, and later went through it again in the 70s with respect to someone else who had done their own analysis of that essay. And then Mark redid an analysis on the original essay and on the commentary of this other person. So you can find those documents, which I'll link to. So my infographic here has essentially what's being talked about, but I guess explained in different words. And I call it the Aquinas on freedom and morality. So what they're trying to get at is that we have the freedom to choose how to act with our free will and that there's two pathways that we can apply our will towards and what actions we will produce. So that's either towards true liberty, true freedom, or false liberty, false freedom. I use liberty and freedom interchangeably. There might be some semantic arguments to be made as to the differences, but I'm not concerned with that. So I'll just refer to it as freedom from now on. But in the original essay, the term liberty was used. So essentially the true, true freedom is the pursuit of moral good. It's a natural born right to be free. We have the right to be free and pursue that moral good of true freedom. Our rights and our freedom is our property. It's something we own. Each individual has the right to freedom and the other rights to, to not be harmed by others who would seek to harm us. And as it progresses in the essay, well, there's your reason in, in, in your consciousness, which produces actions. And these actions are a means towards a goal, an end. Something that you pursue is your goal, your end. So the means to the ends are the actions to produce the goal that you want to obtain. And then I have these arrows going back in the other direction to explain that your goal is actually the reason, the justification, the why for your action. And then I have another arrow going back to the beginning to reason because your goal is your motive, your cause for why you come up for your reason to act. So you have your reason which produces your action, which gets you your goal, but the goal is the actual why. And your reason comes up with the reason, the why, to produce that action. So in the end, the ends, the goal, is your motive, is your ultimate cause for you to produce the causal uh, generation of your action, which then that cause produces the effect of the goal. And that's an external component, but originally it starts internally through your reason. And 
what generates your reason, your justification, your why for you doing something is that goal. So the goal itself that you come up with is the cause for you to produce the effect of why you're going to do something. So there's a cause from the goal to your reason internally, and then you actualize that in an action. So your reason is a cause for the effect of the action you produce, and that action is itself a cause for the manifestation in reality of that goal to come about. And that's the ultimate effect, the purpose, the object that you're trying to accomplish. So your reason is the understanding of the why. The goal is the why itself, the why you're doing something. And your reason, your reasoning capacity comes up with the reason. It, it understands why. And that's coming up with a why. Are, are these valid ends? Are these desirable ends? And we'll get into that more. So ultimately, this whole process is about your freedom to choose the ends. And what ends are we actually choosing? Are we choosing the ends of true freedom? Or are we choosing the ends of false freedom? And I forgot to read that part up here, which was the under false liberty and false freedom was the illusion of liberty. It's where you think something is, is going to bring you your freedom, but will it actually? That's what the false freedom is. And some pursuits through the illusion of freedom is you're wasting your time and energy into looser controls, into softer whips, into less beatings. And these are the apparent victories that the essay points to or mentions. And I'm just giving some examples. So these apparent victories, which is our, our circular cyclical loop of life, where we make these these choices, which don't actually bring us true freedom. It's the illusion of freedom, the illusion of liberty. It's a false freedom, which is where we vote, thinking that voting means you're free. Voting is, is representative. It's the symbol of a free society. That's what we're made to believe. And this is just where we change masters and rulers over and over, going in a cycle, a loop, never getting out of that loop. We're always stuck in it going round and round and round and round and round. And we're just begging for softer whips, for less beatings, for looser control. And people think they, they get victories by keeping the evil at bay, by reducing it, rather than actually getting rid of it. So back to the middle part, freedom to choose the ends with our free will. We have the freedom to choose how to act, but what are the ends we are going for? What are the ends we're trying to pursue, that we're trying to make manifest? So with our free will, we have the freedom of will. That's what the free will is, is the freedom of our will. And with that freedom of will, it necessitates the ability and the right to pursue the end or the goal of true freedom. So we use our, our reason our rational thinking, and by way of logic, we need to come to knowledge of truth. That's what the goal is. By using our reason and rational thinking, is to use our logic to get valid knowledge. And then combined with our free will, then we pursue our goal and our end that is judged or perceived as good. And so it all depends on our reasoning and our rational thinking and then we're going to choose a goal and end that we judge or perceive as good but is it really good or is it just a false good that we perceive and judge as good because that's what our reasoning and our rational thinking has concluded so the true good is what's real actual true right and correct as a pursuit as a goal as an object to attain, to make manifest in the world. And the false good is a semblance of good, the appearance versus the substance, the actual substance of what is good. It can be veiled and obfuscated as what's good. 
It's illusory and unreal. It can be a distraction. It prevents us from realizing and seeing what's actually good. So some examples are the, the feel-good pleasure trap, as I've termed it in previous works I've done. This is when we get focused on pursuing goals that bring us amusement, entertainment, enjoyment, fun, and happiness. Not that there's anything wrong with having those things in life, but when you make it your pursuit, that this is what you're going to judge and reason and rationalize that this is what you should be seeking as the, the ultimate purpose in your life, well, that's, that's a trap. Because you're going with what feels good, what feels good to your senses, what's pleasurable to your senses. And other examples of a false good are this, uh, I guess it's mostly leftist, but it could be in any uh, false political spectrum of your so-called right to entitlements, that someone has to provide me with something, or the so-called the right to free things. And there's a lot of that in entitlement and I guess um, it's po termed as positive rights. You have the right to, well, the big thing now in, in the whole um, control grid and surveillance state is the, the right to a digital ID. So these positive rights where you're the right to and be entitled to something that someone else has to provide you with it, like a government. You have to be provided with a digital ID because it's your right. You have to be provided with whatever welfare or a universal basic income or water or food or shelter, that it's not up to you to work and provide for your own survival, to provide the means for your own sustenance that it's up to someone else and that they have to be coerced and have their rights violated in order to provide you with the things that you think you're entitled to. So a lot of this goes through the, the evil veiled as good. This is part of the false good, the appearance of good. And that's how evil is mostly um, bought into and how it's sold is because it's veiled as good through the semblance and appearance of good. It's obfuscated as what's good when it's actually evil. So we have a society where evil is seen as good and good things are seen as evil. Like freedom is, is wrong. Morality is wrong. And there's other examples that escape me as uh, to el elucidate right now. And another example uh, of this false good I came up with is the whole selling people on things. Do this, uh, follow me, whatever, and uh, good things will happen. You'll see. Vote for this person and good things will happen. You'll get what you want. Follow me and join this cult and you'll get what you want. And Do this and you'll get what you want and good things will happen to you. People are being sold an idea, a belief. They lack a moral truth foundation. Moral truth is not their foundation in life as what drives and propels them to validate and seek goals and ends. And what comes with this is, well, a lack of discernment, and I guess it's due to a lack of discernment that there's a lack of moral truth foundation because people are not actually discerning the difference between what is right and wrong and moral and immoral. And this can also lead to our voluntary enslavement due to this lack of discernment, a lack of moral truth as a foundation, being sold on ideas and beliefs where we believe that they are good. And because of these choices that we make through our flawed reasoning and flawed rational thinking, we apply our free will to that and we pursue goals and ends that are judged and perceived as good, but 
are not actually good. And going to the middle bottom of the first image, the ultimate pursuit, the real true goals and ends, are towards true good and true freedom. Our freedom of will, we have this ability and our right to pursue the end goal of true freedom, but not only is it just a an ability and a right to pursue that as an end, it is the ultimate end. That is the real and true goal and ends that we should be pursuing in our lives. On top of all other pursuits, you got to uh, be responsible for yourself, for your own defense, for your own survival, um, provide for yourself, or if you have loved ones. But in the end, that's just your basic survival, that's just basic living. It's not actually higher living, which I've gotten into in my previous work on Ma'at, and this concept of, of realer, truer, higher life and living. So the ultimate object of our free will is true good, true freedom. And if we go to the second image, what we have internally is the imagination that provides us with many choices that we can choose from. And we use our reason and intellect and intelligence to select one of those many. And how are we selecting? How do we get to reach that one that we pick. Well, we need to take in knowledge. Everything is based on knowledge. We have the knowledge of our environment, of the world we live in, whether it's accurate or not is another issue, but we need knowledge. And that informs our thought and our reasoning capacity, our intellectual capacity. And from that, we come up with our reason and our justification and our why that we apply our will towards and make that choice, which will then culminate in an action from that free will choice. We will produce an action, which will then seek to generate or manifest the goals, the ends, the purpose that we set out for ourselves, the object that we are trying to acquire, which ultimately should be based around actualizing true freedom, true good, true order. And I have at the top right that this true freedom is a property, is a component, is a subset of the larger component of morality, right, good, and truth. What is moral? What is right? What is good? Well, true freedom is a property of that, as is stated in the uh, Aquinas essay. So you're not going to get to true freedom without having the other parts, without having morality, without having right, good, and truth. As Mark Passio states as the law of freedom, as more morality, is being, as more people engage in moral actions, you get more freedom. And as more people engage in immoral actions, you get less freedom or more enslavement. So back to the left, the knowledge, this is our requirement. If we're going to actualize true freedom, true good, true order, the requirement, the requirement is to know what is true to know what is the true good, to know moral truth, to know moral law. And if you know nothing, you say no to nothing. So that's what's meant by know nothing, know nothing. This play on words. 
If you know nothing, you say no to nothing. If you don't know truth, quality truth, moral truth, the true good, what's truly good, then you won't say no to false ways and paths of living to the false good. So you're going to get suckered, you're going to get hoodwinked, you're going to get bamboozled, manipulated, deceived, conned, screwed. And you're going to go down that false path. So when we need our knowledge to inform our thought and reason and intellect, the, the quality of the knowledge is of utmost impor importance. It is the first requirement to actualizing that true freedom. If you have bad knowledge, as the saying goes, garbage in, garbage out, quality in, quality out. If you have false knowledge, well, you're going to produce a, a false result in the end with your action. Even if you think your, your end is freedom, you don't actually know how to obtain that end. So from our, that knowledge that informs our thinking and our reasoning capacity, our intellect and our intelligence, we are going to judge something as good for pursuit. And again, it's that perception of good, or is it actually good? And in that judgment process, we need that correct understanding, which comes from accurate and accurate knowledge of what's true and what's morally true or what's truly good. So we need that correct understanding. And part of the process of figuring this out is to use logic, non-contradiction. And ultimately, we come into harmony and unity with truth and morality internally in our state of being. That we harmonize with this understanding, this correct, right, true, and good understanding. And if we are successful in this process, then we have a perception and judgment aligned with truth and morality. And as a result, we are actually pursuing what's truly good. Because we, we see the way and the path of what's immoral versus what's immoral. And we're choosing the moral over the immoral. That's the knowledge of good and evil. To know the difference between the two. And then we're going to create true freedom and true order. And this depends on objective truth and morality. As the Aquinas essay mentions at the end. That's why at the top right, it's true freedom is a property. It's a subset of morality, right and good and truth. So this correct understanding, non-contradiction and harmony with truth and morality, this depends on, this is what is the, the deciding factor for actualizing true good and freedom. So that's why I say here, the actualizing true good and true freedom depends on what's in that box. To have correct understanding based on your knowledge, to use your logic and your intellect and reasoning and, and thought to weed out the contradictions, to filter them out and come to a proper understanding of what you're trying to pursue. So if you're actually trying to pursue what's, what is freedom and what is good, then you actually need to understand what those things are. Not just have a, a perception, a flawed perception of what it is. So if we fail at this step of, of judgment for what we deem as good and will pursue as good, then that failure is from an absence of reason and intellect and will towards the true good because we're disconnected from truth, morality. We don't understand why the negative happens, why these negative things that are manifesting in our reality are happening. We don't have that understanding. So we're going to keep pursuing things, going around in circles, in loops, in a cycle, towards things that we perceive and judge as good, but are not actually good. We're just going to keep going round and round and round and think that we're actually doing good, but we're not because we don't even know why the things 
that we're trying to avoid are actually happening. And this is the reason why there is the failure of true freedom, because we don't understand why the negative happens, because we're disconnected from what is true, what is morally true. And that's often because there's a failure or an absence of reason and intellect that applies that that we then use our will towards actualizing what is truly good and we're just trying to actualize a perception of good so this failure produces a perception or judgment that is misaligned with truth with morality so we're pursuing a false good as opposed to pursuing what's truly good so in one instance that could be on the right side frivolous and trivial pursuits hedonism the pleasure trap focus or the passions of our lower consciousness our desires our lusts that's what's ruling that's what's ruling our our desires and our capacity and what's what we're thinking about and henceforth what we reason and rationalize that we should do it's because those lower consciousness modalities are ruling us these passions and this is the carnal beastly lower nature ruling our choice and our will ultimately and the, and then ultimately our actions the pursuit of lusts and desires where we ignore morality because that's not what we're thinking about that's not what we have as our our true care at the in the in our heart and our desires to motivate and push us forward what we care about to do and what we pursue we're ignoring morality because we're focused on something else we're focused on what we what feels good to us our passions our carnal lusts and all this is going to allow immorality because when you're focused on these simpler things these frivolous and trivial pursuits well you're not going to necessarily you you because that's your focus you never actually cared for truth and morality most likely so you don't have an understanding of what morality is you don't have an understanding of the objective difference between right and wrong between moral and immoral good and evil freedom and slavery so you're going to allow immorality even if you're not actively participating in it which in this case you probably are if you're in these um, pursuits of what feels good you probably are participating in immorality but if by chance you weren't you're going to be allowing it in your surroundings because you still have no conception of it no proper conception you don't have a proper understanding you just have this perception of what's moral to do based on what feels good which is what you think is good what is judged and perceived as good so you're in the end you're not concerned with morality and you have no care for truth or morality even if you tell yourself that or if you believe it if you don't actually know the difference between what's truly moral and what's truly immoral what's truly right and truly wrong then do you actually care for it no probably not and on the left side apart from frivolous and trivial pursuits which most people are stuck in we um you'll end up in a moral and immoral pathway that's obfuscated and this is the the symbolism of the the checkerboard floor such as is taught in freemasonry where you're walking on the checkerboard floor or evil is veiled as good and the wrong path is seen as quote right because you don't know you can't discern truth from falsity moral from immoral right from wrong so you'll think good things are evil and evil is good the wrong way will seem like the right way because you're you're going ignorantly without the knowledge 
of the truth, of moral truth, of what's truly good. And as a result, you're going to be creating a world of non-freedom, of disorder and chaos, of more enslavement, not creating a world of true freedom and order. And this is ultimately based on that problem of moral relativity and ignorance of what's objectively moral versus immoral or right versus wrong. And this is, uh, that's the, the conclusion of the Aquinas essay on freedom and morality. And I guess I'll just end it there. That's my summary of, of what they were getting at and my point form flowcharty type explanation of it. So I hope that was informative and of value for some, maybe not for everybody, but whoever finds value, great. I'm glad you found value in it. So thank you for your time and attention. Have a good day. Take care. Peace.